Hello, everyone. I'm Simone Bailey, and welcome to episode 14 of The Simone Bailey Show. Thank you all for joining me today. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and share this stream so others can enjoy this as well. A huge shout out to all of my subscribers. Really appreciate your love and support. Want to let you know, I've got this awesome new feature called Super Chat. So if you guys want to support the channel, consider sending a super chat. Today, I am here with none other than Chris Gauthier, who played Neville in Need for Speed Carbon. You may also recognize him as Smee from the hit TV series, Once Upon a Time. He's also been in a ton of shows, including Charmed, Legends of Tomorrow, Continuum, Smallville, Sanctuary, Arrow, Stargate, Supernatural, and was part of the main cast in the TV shows Eureka and Harper's Island. Let's bring him on. Dun da da da. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! Chris has over 97 credits to his name, and I am extremely excited to have such an accomplished actor with us today. Chris, welcome to the show! Thank you so much for having me. This is so cool. I see all of the um, Need for Speed support and community out there, and I think it's flipping dope! Yes! And how cool is it that a girl from Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 gets to interview an actor from Need for Speed no Carbon? Doubt. No doubt. Full circle. And we've been in Smallville, and we've been in Stargate. So this That's is right. this is like an alum like reunion. This yeah, yeah, is yeah. great. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I just watched, uh, I was just watching with my son, The Beavers, from uh, Oregon State, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I have a, a brother-in-law who's a professor at Corvallis, and so watching the Beavers beat uh, Loyola was exceptional. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you must be enjoying quarantine for the fact that you get to spend more time with your family. Yeah, it's actually been really, really good, and I have, I have, a, um, I have two older boys, and mm -hmm. everybody's risen to the occasion. So it's it's really beautiful to see that happen and just to spend time with my family. It's been it's been great. That's awesome. I'm lucky. I'm a lucky that man. is so great. So you played such a great character in Need for Speed Carbon. You were right there with the player, right there with Nikki and Darius and the other crew. I'm going to ask you a few questions about Need for Speed and then also about your incredible acting career. So first off, you played Neville in Need for Speed Carbon. Can you tell us <laughs> can you tell us about your audition for the role? I'm curious like what the casting process was like and your inspiration for this character. Sure. So uh, back in those days, I mean, it, this was all relatively new, the whole like acting in video games as as like yeah. a person, as you know, mm -hmm. you were in the first. So you totally. Mm -hmm. know. Um, I had like this skewed mis misconception that it was sort of like like um, anime style kind of thing. So my what I went into the audition with was kind of this like whole like um, that sort of bravado, that sort of anime bravado where I was like, ah, I'll get him <laughs> like that. Kind of. <laughs> and I remember, um, I remember going in and it was, it was really weird. It was, it was, everything was super duper different, but I just, I, I wanted to, yeah, there he is. <laughs> so amazing. I I love this like sort of tough, but quirky guy. So that was basically mm -hmm. it. It was like so silly. It was so silly, but I just, I went, you know, like the thing about acting is, Commitment. So as long as you're committing 100%, I think you're, you know, you're on the right track. And I booked the part. So, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so um, this was your first time working on a video game then? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. And the, the, it was incredibly strange. The whole, the whole process. I mean, they shaved every little bit of you i don't i don't know if you had this too like bits of your hairline were being well i'm i'm part uh chinese so i don't have a lot of hair oh right <laughs> <laughs> i on the other hand have a lot of hair 
So oh, was, really? You don't say, it. yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot of like weird trimmings here. I remember it just being like, like the makeup process alone. And it wasn't like incredible amounts of makeup, but it was like incredible, incredible amounts of makeup in the sense that they had to like get rid of any like imperfection. So they basically yeah. had us stage ready looking like a digital character. So right. you can imagine our hair is like, like it was, it was hard. Our clothes were like starched. So you would have this kind of ripple effect, but it would mm -hmm. stay like that. No matter what you did, it would stay like that. Because well, they wanted it to look natural, right? We learned from Habib Zargapur, who was the um, Viz effects and art director at EA uh, for a certain period of time who helped work on the games. He said they did all these tests with the clothing where they would dip them in glue so that like jeans could tech, like stand up or they'd also laminate the clothes because yeah. that is what helps the clothes look more CG if there's no yeah. wrinkles. Yeah, so that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, so you're basically stuck. And I don't know if you had this too, like we did a lot of the car um, like reaction segments. Did you do any of that stuff? So where you're in like this igloo and you have like cameras everywhere, like 300 oh. and like above you and everything. And you had to sit there and they're like, okay, you're crashing now. And that you'd go like, Ugh! and they'd be like, but don't move. Right. So they like, do it again, crash, but don't move. So you go like, mm. and they'd be like, okay, you need to be a little bit more animated. It was like, it was so nuanced and so like incredibly hard, but right. incredibly rewarding. Yeah. It's yeah. like concentrated orange juice. You have to be very specific. With yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And yeah. then you guys did, uh, you worked against the giant green screen as well. Yeah. 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 So again, I mean, that is something that you also will do in, in shows as well. Like, um, mm -hmm. uh, sanctuary. We did a, a ton of green screen work. Um, as well as Once Upon a Time, we did a bunch of green screen work too. But I think that might have been the first of it. So that was a little bit of a trip for me, but I had come from theater. So working with yeah. like an imaginary backdrop was something I wasn't like scared of. Or, yeah, that's super like, exciting. It yeah. Yeah. So you worked with Nikki, actress Emmanuel Vaugier, and Darius, actor Tom O'Pennicott. What do you remember about uh, working on the game with those actors? Do you have a favorite moment on set with uh, those guys? I think I think it was just it, they were so pleasant. I think mm -hmm. they were experienced actors at the time coming into it, or at least so I thought. I was relatively new. I'd done some. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, well, I had done some stuff, but I wasn't like as pro as I deemed them. You know what I mean? So it was, mm -hmm. I was in awe. Very cool. It was just very, very cool. I think this is a cut scene, isn't it? This, this, well, this is this is the one with the drinks. Yeah, I bring in. Drinks. Yeah, the the soda and the water. And Elias, like, we bring some options, Elias right? <laughs> we introduce Elias here, I think, to fix this. Yeah. Yeah, who played Sal. Yeah. 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 Who's gone on to, like, major... He's done a ton players. of stuff. But, yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. I know. I'd like to talk to him, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I saw him, he replied to one of our tweets, so that was yeah, cool. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was like, remember when we had to shave our <laughs> legs or something like that? Yeah. I, like, I mean, wow. every little bit, you would shave, like, you would get, like, just a tiny bit here, and they would be shaving in. So you would look like, you would basically already look like a digital walking into the stage. Yeah. Hair, like, starch. It was crazy. I think they wanted all of us to look as clean as yes. possible. Like my hair was like super hairsprayed and yeah. yeah, all the other actors too had yeah. to wear those kind of glued outfits. I did, I got away with it because um, without having that because my clothes were so tight, but oh. anyway. <laughs> so I'm curious, were you much of a gamer before this? Did you grow up playing video games? Yeah, I mean, I played uh, 007. I played, mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was like a Tony Hawk. Oh, Got, nice. Yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah. Um, that's basically where it ended for me. I didn't, I got this game when I was in it because I was like, I want to, I want to play myself. Oh, well, I was going to ask you if you've ever played Need for Speed yeah. Carbon and you have. Yeah, but ages ago, ages ago. I mean. Did you finish the game ever? No, no. Okay. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at the game, which is sad. <laughs> crash, crash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's fun. That's it's fun. fun. It's fun. And it's yeah. fun to see yourself. It's fun to see yourself for sure. Uh-huh. 
So I was uh, excited to learn that you were born in England and you're a British citizen, which I didn't know. Um, I'm curious, what was your first car? Because I don't know where you actually were when you were of driving age. So I moved to Canada when I was five years old. So I okay. started driving in England. Uh, my first car, though, when we, my wife and I came down to uh, Vancouver, I didn't get my license until I was like 20, 21, or at least my first car until I was 21. Oh, okay. And, you know, I grew up in a small town, and, uh, and it was fine just to walk everywhere. Yeah. When we moved down here, I ended up getting a Honda CRX, which I still, to this day, love. Like mm-hmm. just a little uh, two seat, you know. It's mm-hmm. just you know about CRXs. Yeah, they're yeah. super cool. Little compact Hondas. They're so freaking cool. And then I moved on to a Prelude. I'm right now driving a GLI, which is like my jam. A VW. Mm-hmm. I had a GLI. Mm-hmm. The best. I'm a big fan of the VW GTI Golf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, See, I've, I've had two of, of those, and I like, love those cars so much. Yeah, GLI is basically the same thing, but with a uh, sedan body. Nice. Pretty cool. Well, I was going to ask what your dream car is, but is that your dream car? It's kind of, it kind of is. I mean, if I could get like a souped up version of that with like all the bells and whistles, like it's not it's not optimal in terms of like everything being pristine on the inside. I mean, it's like, it's a little bit shoddy on the interior. And I just mean in craftsmanship. I don't mean like um, looks. It looks fantastic. But okay. as far as craftsmanship is concerned, it's not, it's not upper echelon. So if there's anyone in Vancouver, Canada that wants to help uh, uh, Chris soup up his car, uh, yeah, give him a holler. <laughs> um, so curious, if Need for Speed ever asked you to come back to reprise your role, would you do it? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, I know I, I made it sound like all that stuff was torturous, but it really wasn't. When you're in film and TV and, and, and media, um this is par for the course as you know um Mm -hmm. that you'll go through makeup and they will take away bits of you but it's so it's so rewarding to see the end product and and the same with need for speed seeing that was like um incredible an an incredible experience and the fact that it's interactive and 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 all that stuff i i would 100 percent do it yes yeah yeah Yeah. so much fun amazing So I know everyone is really excited to see you here from all of their favorite shows as well as Need for Speed. And I know fans love your character as Smee from Once Upon a Time. And I also have a lot of uh, Stargate fans who watch this show. I'm curious, what inspired you to become an actor? Hmm. Um, I think I was always a ham. I was always, uh, yeah, there's Smee. Hi, Smee. Um, (laughs) I was always a ham uh, trying to be like a funny guy. I remember when I moved from England to Canada, I would like lie to people about weird stuff. And like, okay, I would say like things like um, back in England, we're allowed to have sharks in our fish tank. I grew up with sharks. I grew up with lots of sharks. And uh, I remember just like, just like whatever I could do to kind of like get attention and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. I remember finding out about theater. I watched um, my, my mentor, Wayne Ashton, um, this man from my hometown uh, in this play. And I was like, you can like, you can do this and people will just come and watch you like, like a captivated yeah. audience. <laughs> and I remember, it was so brilliant. So I got into like school plays early on and then um, professional theater throughout later high school, like amateur theater as well as professional theater. And um, then my wife was like, we need to, then girlfriend was like, we need to come mm-hmm. go down to Vancouver and and get you going in films. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't super duper motivated because I was happy doing plays and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And it worked out. <laughs> that is so yeah. awesome. it definitely yeah. worked out yeah. and we're, I love watch you are so watchable you're such a scene stealer and oh, like you. you play such lovable roles but also yeah. just like yeah. the other flip yeah. <laughs> just yeah there's awesome. toy man there's toy man in in smallville who wasn't that savory he was uh he was a pretty sinister fellow there he is Mm. Um, so that making one, your old kryptonite bombs. Yeah, I, that's all he <laughs> did. He didn't have any superpowers, but he was like, he was he was just a, a, a an insane mind. So I thought that was a bit of a challenge to make mm-hmm. him ominous. 
And uh, he ended up sort of being an integral part right when this the, the whole series was ending, which was kind of sad, but like just a thrill to get to play somebody who didn't rely on superpowers and stuff. Well, like and, and they also kept bringing you back season after season after season. Yeah, like this yeah, was yeah. an ongoing recurring role. I mean, that's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, it started out, I was like a loser corp technician um, very early on, I think like season three under Michael Rosenbaum. And then, yeah. so it was unrelated, but people are like, then correlating it. They're like, oh, he was like this Luther Corp technician. And he was like, he was like snubbed or something. So he went off and became Toy Man. So people are drawing their own like storylines to it, which is like hilarious and fun. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. And I was going to ask like, what are some of your most memorable roles, favorite roles you've been at, you've, you've done? You like you you intuited that. <laughs> um, definitely, definitely, Ronald Resnick from Supernatural was one of my uh, was one of my favorites. Um, partly because he was this he was this cons he was this conspiracy theorist who was right. So he mm. believed that there was these sort of like mandroid things that were going. He was wrong about specifics, but he was right that something was screwed up. And to yeah. play that story arc of to play the story arc of being like. Um, this guy who nobody believed, you know, and I think it lends validity to people who aren't believed, you know, when there's, when there's things out there and you really root for this guy. Yeah. And the part could have been, um, the part could have been bad, but it was written so well, you know, like you really mm -hmm. just like fell for the guy and, uh, yeah. I won't give, give away any spoilers about it, but, um, it was a thrill to play. And and then, so the other aspect of it too was that we shot in a, in a massive bank, downtown Vancouver. So I got to go into this bank with a shotgun and unload yeah. this shotgun into the ceiling, which is like a, such a thrill for actors. To yeah, be able to do, this kind to, of do to do the unthinkable that you would yeah. never actually do, yeah. but you get to like act it out. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like when you're a kid, you go, oh man, that would be so fun. It, it really, really is. And I got to go into this bank with a gun, you know, bits fell down on me when I shot the gun in the bank. And like my my line going into the bank is, this is not a robbery. So another <laughs> kind of hilarious too. So it was fantastic. That that one is definitely up there as well as I think Eureka and Once Upon a Time um, are all equally rewarding. Oh, Eureka. Yes, yeah. you yeah. as Vincent, such Vincent. a fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And you were on that show for a long time. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I was on, I think maybe I missed one or two episodes total. Yeah, no, such maybe. a lovable character. Yeah, so he was sort of the town, um, like he took care of everybody. He was a he was sort of the den mother of the town and like, um, that's where basically issues would resolve. Every episode had some sort of like high stakes drama going on and it would mm -hmm. resolve and then everybody would be at the cafe at the end having um, Vince Bressos. <laughs> Vince Bressos. <laughs> That's awesome. Vince Bressos on the house. Yeah. So you have accomplished so much in your career. What is a role that you would like to play but you oh, haven't man. yet. Do you have a dream role? Yeah, I think like, I think I'd love to play something kind of serious for once. Like a, most of my guys are very character -y. It would be nice to right. be some sort of like, like I would still like to have quirk and still like to have character because I find that, that um, people actually are that way. So do you know what I mean? Like, yeah when there's like too serious of a character, it's like that to me is unrealistic. Whereas some people think that characters that are simultaneously funny and um, can be leaders and stuff like that, that's unbelievable. But I think that's more believable than just like a robot type character. Right. So some sort of like leader of like, uh, I don't know, like the walking dead, like leading, leading a group of people or something like that. Oh. I don't know. I Cause my brain went to, I don't know if you ever saw the show the night of, but there was a great detective. No. Oh. It was a great detective, and like I thought, you would be awesome as a detective. I mean, I you'd be awesome that, as a ton yeah. of things. But. Yeah, and like period stuff. I would love to do. I would love to do oh. some period stuff as well. I I got but really I into Bridgerton. Yeah, 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 I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen oh, it yet. yeah. But like anything like that, um, Shakespeare. Like I love Shakespeare as well. So like mm -hmm. I mean, do a, a film, some film Shakespeare stuff would be 
that aspect. Yeah. I'm just Gap, looking at all this stuff. Gap, yeah, yeah. Gap Stargate says you'd be great on the new Stargate series along with Simone. Let's do it. While they're trying to get it off the ground, we oh. really hope. Yeah, I think they're close. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm another doing. person says you look like Eugene in The Walking Dead. I can't remember who that is. He's the dude, I think, with the mullet. <clears throat> He's the son. Okay. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. I know we only have you for a limited time. Do you mm. have a message for the fans? Um, I just would like to say how much I appreciate um, all of your support. Um, it really means a lot. for. I know that uh, there's fans and for lots of different stuff, and there seems to be a real good um, community within the Need for Speed group. So I would just like to say thank you for all of the support. This is... It's a good energy. Thank you. And yeah. energy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, have you been able to work during the pandemic? Do you have any Little, projects coming yeah. out or any so announcements? I, so I did do Charmed, um, mm -hmm. which was really cool. It was a, it was a two parter and I play again, similar to my Ronald Resnick character. I play this like alien hunter guy. Um, so if oh. you were, that one, that one's good. And then I'm in one that um, stars Ashanti called Honey Girls, which is coming out. Oh, uh, really? I don't know how much I can say about it, so I'll just leave okay. it. You'll probably, like, if you look at, if you if you Google Honey Girls, you'll probably see bits and pieces. So I'm not sure how much. Is that going to be streaming, or do you know? Um, I think it's going to be theaters, I think. Oh, it's a full-on movie. Film. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. So I just finished that and then finished Charmed. And then I did a couple of Hallmarks. I think they've already aired. I think they were Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, I shot like four things over the pandemic. Good for it's been you. A little, it's been a little hard. It's been a little scary in terms of like how we go about it. And and just being on set with everyone because it's very insular, right? There's you're yeah. you're surrounded by people and you're, you know, there's a hundred of people uh, like hundreds of people there at any mm -hmm. given time so right i'm set so um it was a little bit scary going in i don't know have have you done stuff in um i've done other things but everything has been virtual okay yeah lucky yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um most people are really good about wearing the masks and stuff like that but uh mm -hmm. you know it's still scary it was still it was still a little bit scary and I'm a very yeah. strong man, so. You're a what? Strong man, brave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting. And that's also the beauty of these streaming platforms is that the performance lives on and on. So you're, you're everywhere, which is awesome. Absolutely. Um, I, I really uh, enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks Chris. for having me. Yeah, it really is an honor to have you on the show and, and a pleasure to speak with such an incredibly talented actor such as yourself. You are most welcome to come back anytime. And I really appreciate you and I know the fans do too. For the fans, if you'd like to stay connected, I've put links in the description box below so you can find us there. Tune in next week for my exclusive live stream interview with Toru Sato, AKA Bull from Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 actor Kevin Otsuji. That is going down on Saturday, April 3rd at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you want more Need for Speed and video game content, please check out my other Need for Speed videos and celebrity interviews. You can find those vids and more on my channel. And I have other awesome videos coming soon, so please subscribe so you'll be the first to know. Also, if you want autographed headshots, video shout outs, or want to hang out with me one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom, you can find me on Jemmy, which is just like Cameo. You can find me on jemmy.app slash Simone Bailey. That link is down below as well. So before we head off, please click that like button. Your support is greatly appreciated. Feel do free it. to, <laughs> yeah, do it. Neville says do it. Uh, feel free to share this stream so others can enjoy as well. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you stay healthy and happy. Till next time, stay safe, be kind to one another, and keep playing Need for Speed. Take care, everyone. Love you all. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.